Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on repairing your audio using Adobe Audition. You know, we never plan to record bad audio. It's just that somehow, through no intent of our own, it shows up that way. Adobe Audition, which began life, by the way, before Adobe bought it as Cool Edit. Adobe Audition has a reputation for doing a great job at repairing your audio, and that's what I want to showcase in today's webinar. By the way, we have a new subscription service that I want to encourage you to take a look at. All of our online video tutorials and webinars are now available via a subscription. This is a great way to access all our online training, and subscribers can attend all our live webinars for free. For one low monthly price, you get streaming access anytime, anywhere via the Internet. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Adobe Audition is known for its ability to repair audio. However, until the most recent version, Adobe Audition only existed on Windows systems. With the CS 5.5 release, it came to the Mac. So what I want to do today is to show you some of the power that Audition provides. We'll start by looking at how to import and export files to Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro 7 and the Finder. How to use Audition's automatic diagnostic repair tools. How to separate audio channels. How to remove hum, clicks, pops, errant frequencies. <laughs> how to repair excessive clipping. How to reduce, remove noise. There is an amazing range of things we can do with Adobe Audition. By the way, if you want a general overview of the interface and how Audition works, we have another webinar that covers that in more detail than I'll be able to go into here. Visit LarryJordan.biz slash store for more information. In this part, now that we know how to import audio files and import media files and move projects from Final Cut to Audition and from Premiere to Audition, I want to concentrate on how to make our audio sound better. I'll show you how to separate multiple channels into single audio channels, how to remove a plosive like a P that's too close to the microphone without losing the sound of the letter. Use spectrum controls, including the lasso selection and the healing brush, to do some amazing frequency-based cleanup. How to reduce clicks and pops, how to recover dynamic range from clipped clips, which is not easy to say. And this is typical of um, HDSLR cameras where they've got bad AGC circuits and you're, you're just pushing too much to the top and we need to smooth out that dynamic range. I'll show this to you both graphically and orally. And then some stuff that left my jaw on the ground as I was experimenting with this software. How to reduce background noise, including reducing hum. Oh, this last one, stay awake. I tell you, these last two are just stunning. Let's get to work. I'm going to switch from this workspace where I'm able to watch video. I'm going to go back to the default layout. And the reason is I don't have any pictures to look at. Notice that the file menu moves up to the top. The effects rack and diagnostics tab move to the center. And the history, which shows us what we've been doing, is down in the lower corner. Our timeline and workspace is still where it used to be. So now we're going to bring in some files. File, import file. Let's go inside a folder called Problem Audio, and let's just select everything and bring it in. A little bit of processing is involved as it evaluates all the files. And the first one that I want to look at is this one. I thought that I was recording a stereo pair, but unfortunately, I exported not a stereo pair, but a six-track Dolby Surround. I've got two tracks of audio and four tracks where there's just nothing. Taken up hard disk space. It's just awkward to work with. Awful. So how do I fix that? The easiest way to fix it is to select the clip that has the multiple tracks and right mouse click on it and say Extract Channels to Mono Files. It now goes through and creates individual audio clips of each of the six tracks. And because this is an interview, I want to have the interviewer's voice on one track and the guest's voice on a second track. I'm just going to hold the shift key down and select the first two tracks. Now that they're there, I could click this button, which is the fourth one in from the left, which is the insert into multi-track, or right mouse click on one of my two selected clips and say insert into multi-track, new multi-track session. 
It says, what are you going to call it? I'm going to call it test interview. It's going to be stored into my default Adobe Audition folder. Sample rate of 48K. Bit depth I'm going to talk about in just a minute. And it's a stereo output. Click OK. And there's my two tracks. And it's ready for editing. <laughs> Will Pizneski is the VP of post-production for Authentic Entertainment. So there's me on the left hand, but I'm pan center, so it appears on both speakers. And here's Will. Reality series and pilots at the moment. And now I have complete control over filters and editing of my voice on track one and the guest's voice on track two. By the way, in case you were wondering, you can, in fact, type and label each of these tracks. Not a problem. We can zoom in because we've learned how to do that. All the stuff that we've already learned how to do, we can do with, with two tracks or one track. What we've just done is we've gotten rid of all those unneeded tracks by separating them into separate audio tracks. Okay, I'm going to go back to switch between sequences. I click this downward pointing arrow right up here. See where it lists the session. I'm going to select Lisa and go close and don't save changes. And now we're back to our editor. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store.